Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. Today I wanted to have a look at some extremely early game goals that you can set yourself right off of Tutorial Island that will help you set a direction for your account at the very beginning. Because I know when a lot of new players uh, create new accounts, they can be a bit lost because there's so much to do in old school RuneScape that uh, they can actually be overwhelming. So here are some early game goals that you can set yourself right off of Tutorial Island. Uh, these will not take more than a couple hours to complete and will unlock some extremely valuable things and will benefit you in the future as well. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoy and let's get started. To begin with here, coming in at number one is completing the Witch's House quest. Now this is an extremely vital quest to complete early game because almost everything in Old Scroonscape wants to kill you and completing the Witch's House quest uh, will get you some valuable early game hit points levels. It will only take you about 10 minutes to complete and it will get you from level 10 to 24 hit points and that makes a huge difference early game. For example, there are quite a few monsters you need to defeat uh, in other quests and you will need hit points levels to do that. The only thing you will need for this quest is probably 13 magic because you will need to actually mage a monster in this quest and the only way you'll be able to do that without dying is to mage it because you can actually do it from a safe area. Coming in at number 2 is unlocking the spirit tree transportation system. Now to do this you need to complete the quest uh, Tree Gnome Village and that in itself is a good requirement to go for because you will get quite a bit of combat experience for completing the quest. For completing the Tree Gnome Village quest you will get 2 quest points and 11,450 attack experience and you will have access to the Spirit Tree. Now the Spirit Tree can teleport you to 4 locations right off the bat, the Kazard Battlefield which is just a bit south of West Ardoin so it's a great way to get across the map as opposed to pulling uh, the lever or running across the White Wolf Mountain, uh, you can teleport to the Tree Gnome Village, uh, which is the central hub, and again, very useful for completing other quests down the line. You can teleport to the Tree Gnome Stronghold, which is one of the easiest ways to get to the Grand Tree, because otherwise you have to go all the way from Arduin and then run up. And of course, the most important one is there's one located in the northeast of the Grand Exchange, which is one of the areas you will be in the most, so having a direct teleport there is extremely useful. Coming in at number 3 is purchasing some early game combat gear that have no requirements. Now there are a few pieces of early game gear that is vital to pick up and they're extremely cheap. The first one being the Amulet of Glory. This will be way better than any free to play amulet and it's pretty generous across the board. It'll be good for magic, ranged, or attack in the early game. There are no requirements to wear it and will provide you with 10 attack bonus in every stat, 3 in every defensive stat, 6 melee strength bonus and a plus 3 prayer bonus so it's a very good amulet across the board only cost about 12,000 coins right now and on top of that has quite a few useful teleport options on it. Next up here is the combat bracelet. The combat bracelet is another piece of dragonstone jewelry it'll only cost you around 12 or 13,000 once again. It's going to be similarly well rounded except in magic. You're going to get 7 attack bonuses across the board except for magic which you'll get plus 3 and you're going to get plus 5 defense bonus across the board except for magic where you're only going to get plus three. This will be your best glove slot item until you start getting Barrow's Gloves, so it's really good to pick up early game. A few other cheap early game items are stuff like the Ancient Blessing, which costs around 10,000 coins and will actually give you a prayer bonus in your ammunition slot. You can wear this all the time whenever you're using magic or melee because nothing ever goes in the ammunition slot except occasionally when you are ranging. Next up here is completing the Tourist Trap quest. The Tourist Trap quest has no actual quest requirements. The only skill requirement to complete it is 11 fletching and 20 smithing. Now this one is a bit unique because you can get a ton of experience and level 1 skills. You get to apply an experience lamp of 4650 experience twice. And now there's a select amount of skills that you can choose from. You can choose from agility, fletching, smithing, and thieving. And you can put that experience in from level 1. So you can get almost to level 30 in the skill just from level 1 with this quest or you can split it up and put 4.6k in two different skills. I would highly recommend picking either agility or thieving because fletching or smithing experience are both very quick and you will not really need this early game boost so much. Coming in at number 5 is completing the waterfall quest. This is one of the most iconic and useful early game quests to complete and for good reason because the waterfall quest gives you 13.7 thousand strength and attack experience which is enough to get you from level 1 to 30 attack and strength which will instantly boost your combat level up and this quest can be completed right off of tutorial island this will save you hours on your initial account grind because early game combat levels go very slowly relatively to how much experience you are getting so skipping up to level 30 attack and strength is extremely important in early game 
Coming in at number 6 is unlocking the Ava's Accumulator. The Ava's Accumulator is a vital item to unlock before you really start training your range skill. What the Ava's Accumulator does is it picks up ranged ammunition off the ground so you do not have to pick it up every time. This is extremely important because uh, ammunition does cost quite a bit of money and if you're just leaving it on the ground uh, you are going to be wasting a lot of money or if you pick it up you're going to be wasting a lot of time. To unlock the Ava's Accumulator you will need to complete the quest Animal Magnetism which has a few quest requirements as well as a skill requirement of 35 woodcutting, 30 ranged, 19 crafting, and 18 slayer. The main reward is the Accumulator. Now you'll get a reward of either the uh, Ava's Attractor or the Ava's Accumulator depending on what range level you have right now. Ava's Attractor will be given to anyone under level 50 ranged however you can upgrade it uh, once you're past 50 to get the Ava's Accumulator, which is a higher stat bonus. However, they both function pretty much the exact same. Coming in at number 7 is a bit of a different one, and that is setting up your account security properly. Now, this isn't really a goal for content or anything in your account, but it is very important, especially when you are just starting off from Tutorial Island. It's very important that you set up a bank pin correctly. This ensures that if someone does happen to get into your account, there will be one line of defense between uh, most of your bank and the hacker. It's important that you set up a two-factor authentication. Now that is using your phone to secure your account even further, so they'll need access directly to your phone to be able to unlock the account. This is the only way I feel safe with my accounts because it is very easy to find old passwords or social engineer uh, information from you that it's very important that you have a kind of physical key to your account. And the best way to do that is with two-factor authentication. One other thing worth mentioning here is to make sure you have two-factor authentication on your email address that you use for the account. Without that, someone can actually get access to your email and bypass your authenticator completely, so it's important that you have both of those. And of course, it's important that you do not use the same password for your RuneScape account as any of your other accounts. Now, this is just kind of general safety information you should use for other things in your life, uh, but related to RuneScape, very important as well. Coming in at number 8 is completing the Tears of Guthix mini quest. Now, the Tears of Guthix is a quest that you can initially complete and thereafter repeat it once a week. Now this is going to give you some experience in your lowest level skill. Now at lower levels you are going to get a bit less experience per tier that you collect but once all of your skills are above level 30 you will be getting the max amount of experience per tiers. Now the way this gets better and better as your account progresses is that the amount of time that you have in the room is based off of your quest point total. So the more quests that you have completed the longer you'll be able to stay in there and search for tiers. With about 200 quest points I'm getting around 7 to 10k experience per time that I do this and this goes in your lowest level skill so if you have some skills you don't like training like runecrafting or thieving or fishing you will be able to get around 10,000 experience every week and this only takes about two minutes to complete. The earlier that you start to do this the more passive experience you will get throughout your account's lifetime and it's just really a valuable resource to do and, and worth unlocking early game. Coming in at number 9 is completing the Arduin Easy Diary. Now the reason for completing this is unlocking the Arduin Cloak 1 which is probably the single most valuable early game reward from a diary. This cloak will give you an unlimited teleport to the Arduin Monastery which is just a little bit south of Arduin itself and on top of that it actually gives you a bit of a prayer bonus for a cape slot and this item is reobtainable if you lose it so you don't really have to worry about losing your cloak. There are not a lot of requirements to complete the Arduin Easy Diary, but you will need to complete Biohazard, as well as a few other minor quests and skill requirements. And last up here, coming in at number 10, is achieving base 30 on all of your skills. Now, not only does this have the benefit of making it so your tiers of Guthix will give you maximum experience, but it is just really important to level up your skills early game because that experience comes very quickly. Now, the best way to do this is via quest, but if you want to train it normally, that is totally fine as well. This will give you a nice early game goal to shoot for and will help you learn about every skill individually. Like for one you need to unlock runecrafting and herb lore with a quest and figuring out how to train an early game is very important. Getting any skill from 1 to 30 will really not take very long, probably only like 3 or 4 hours at maximum. Getting base 30s in all of your skills will also uh, pretty much ensure that you'll be able to complete all of the easy achievement diaries, uh, barring some quests potentially. But on top of that, getting base 30s will help you complete most of the early game quest requirements. Quests in general don't actually have that high of requirements, so getting base 30 will probably let you complete more than half of the quests in the entire game. And the earlier that you get the requirements for those quests, the earlier that you can get the experience rewards from them, which will give you the maximum value because getting 10,000 experience in a skill at level 30 will be much more valuable than getting it at level 70. Anyway guys, that is it for the end of the video. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention is I know this is the day that I normally upload my Slayer Only Ironman account. Uh, I'm still working on it. I've been working on some extremely long tasks and over the Christmas holidays I didn't really have much time 
uh, to play the account much. So hopefully I will get an episode out next week, so on Sunday, if not the following Sunday. But I don't really want to release the episode unless I have a substantial amount of progress on it. Anyway guys, that is 10 early game goals. If you feel like there's something missing from the list, I did make another video like this a few months back, so it could easily be on that one as well. Go check it out. I will leave a video card for that at the end of the video. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time.